Autism, where affect is the number one tool we use in supporting child development through playful interactions. Hello, this week we have with us a very special treat. I've been eager to interview this person for quite a while. We have with us Dr. Rick Solomon, who's known as Dr. Rick. He is a developmental behavioral pediatrician in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and he's the medical director and founder of The Play Project, which many of you might have heard of. It is derived from the developmental individual differences relationship-based model that we talk about here at Affect Autism. So he's an expert DIR. Um, he was a close colleague of Dr. Greenspan and Dr. Serena Weeder, the authors of Engaging Autism. And um, welcome, Dr. Solomon. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's great to have you here. Uh, we, we cover everything DIR and developmental approach uh, to, to developmental differences and the play project is something that I haven't specifically covered, although we're, we're linked to your website on my links page since the beginning. Um, so why don't you tell us what exactly is the play project? All right, well, um, uh, let me start with our mission and vision because I think that gives you a pretty good understanding of what we're doing. Our, our mission really is to help families connect with their children in a joyous way um, so that we really help uh, children with autism, especially young children with autism, reach their full potential. So, so that's our mission, is to, is to help parents connect with their child. Our vision is really to train uh, pediatric professionals and child development experts to coach parents um, so that uh, they can help the, the parents interact with their child in a way that really helps the child reach their full potential. And uh, in a way that we can reach more and more professionals on a larger scale so that we can help as many children as possible. So, I mean, fundamentally, we train professionals uh, who are child development experts to coach parents to help their children through play. And, um, and, and that's really our mission and vision in a nutshell. And also, um is does P L A Y stand for anything or the the uh, the acronym stands for play and language for autistic youngsters <clears throat> because our focus is much narrower than the usual DIR framework i mean our focus is on young children with autism and it involves parent training what we call a uh, parent implemented models that use a developmental relationship based framework um, so so our, our focus is on empowering parents to be their child's best play partner so that uh, they can basically engage with their children all day long. And, and we train professionals to, to do that. We have a structured program uh, that does that. And that's a big part of what our website uh, addresses is uh, how do you get trained as a professional and where can parents find those professionals all over the world? Uh, we're, we're now in about 30 some odd states and about, in about nine different countries. Uh, and we've trained uh, well over 500, 600 play consultants uh, all around the world. And the momentum is increasing. So I, I, I also want to note here that the play project joins many other parent implemented models that use a developmental framework uh, and the research is growing and the evidence is growing and so the interest is growing and we're getting requests all the time for for more professional training uh, which is very exciting very exciting I, I think i think the landscape is really changing now people are starting to realize that aba alone can't meet the need and so as a result training parents is becoming well, for two things one is the evidence base has grown uh, dramatically in the last five years so now we are evidence-based practice and uh, it's um, easier you know and less expensive to train parents than it is to use therapists to work with your children so there's a, I think there's a kind of revolution that's going on in the country right now uh, because people are realizing we just can't have thousands literally thousands of children on wait lists waiting for therapeutic services that won't uh, won't begin for a year or or even longer 
and in, on, in Ontario here, the wait list has been two plus and more like three to four years. I'm telling you, this is happening all over the country, all over the world. Um, there was a really interesting article by a guy named Mandel. So, you know, I'm an old academic pediatrician. So, you know, I go to the literature and I'm very interested in research. And uh, if people are interested, there's a JAMA article by a pediat a JAMA Pediatrics by a guy named Mandel, M-A-N-D-E-L-L. By the way, this is all on our website too, uh, on our research page, where he looked at the... Here, um, I, put, I put up the research page while you're, I've put up your yeah, website while we're okay. talking. Yeah, great. Yep. Uh, it's under professionals, uh, I think maybe about. Look under the about section there. No. Research yeah, research and evidence. And evidence. There yeah. we go. Playproject.org for those listening on audio. Yep. And if you scroll down uh, to the bottom there, you'll you'll see um, go all the way down here. There I am. There, there, there's right there at the yes. bottom. Mandel. Um, so uh, what he found is he looked at all those states that uh, passed the autism laws mostly ABA laws. And he looked- And, and let's just clarify uh, for those that may not know, Applied Behavioral Analysis, ABA, which is the standard recommendation for, for most people, that's what they recommend when your child gets diagnosed with autism because that's what was most prevalent. And as Dr. Solomon said, that is really changing now as neuroscience informs us about uh, development and, and brain plasticity. We now see developmental models coming more into the forefront. Yeah, along with that research, which is listed right here, by the way. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I'll talk about that a little bit. But the Mandel article basically showed that yes, ABA did help improve services, but thousands of children are still not getting services despite the laws and despite ABA. So, so this is really critical that we have alternatives um, just from a public policy standpoint. And, and if you look at these other articles here, the Smith, Mercer, Wong, Solomon, and then this recent review down here on bins, uh, this is not my opinion. This is a review, these are reviews by independent reviewers of peer-reviewed journals who looked at the research evidence for what we call develop, parent-implemented models, parent-implemented, that have a developmental and relationship-based foundation. Mm -hmm. And what they found consistently is that parents could be trained, number one, the parents can be trained in these models, and number two, that the children improve in their social um, interactional abilities, and social deficits are at the core of autism. And so really these models address the, de the definition of autism according to the, you know, the DSM-5, which is kind of the standard definition of autism. So these articles, along with my review, the commentary, um, will give you the over a dozen randomized controlled trials that show that uh, these parent implemented models, models are evidence-based and, and work in the real world. And, and our research study, which was, which was one of the largest of its kind, we had a, a hundred, over 125, we had 128 children in our study. A randomized control trial is mentioned, by the way, in all of these reviews, these recent reviews, um, and has been found to be very compelling. So we are practicing an evidence-based approach that really empowers the parents you know, to help their children. Uh, and and it's, very exci it's very exciting to me because I think this has profound implications for public policy. And, and that's what I'm finding, is that a lot of early intervention systems, a lot of insurance companies now are paying for what we do, um, and uh, community mental health agencies are beginning to use our model and others uh, to really help a lot, a lot of children. And, to, and there's nothing better in my, in my mind that this is the, the, the great reward is when you empower parents, help the children with autism, and the children really improve in their social abilities, um, there's probably nothing more gratifying than, than that. And, uh, and, and for, just for the listeners as a reference, this last review article, uh, Amanda Binns and um, the Oram Cardi article, 
we did a podcast with Amanda Binns about a month and a half ago, and she goes through this research article. So I'll direct listeners to that if they want to hear about that as well. It's it's um it's a really good uh, review of all the different developmental, social, pragmatic, as they're called, interventions. Yes, yes exactly, exactly. And that's 2019. So you you're really up to date. Nice and recent, and that's the other thing is is that all of this um, evidence is is really recent. Um, that shows that these parent implemented models work and and of course um, that that's um, one thing that we love about the DIR model is that it is it is a way uh, a multidisciplinary approach a way that anybody who works with children can use the model and so I wanted to ask for the play project um, yeah. do you train OT, speech language pathologists, teachers, like all the different realm of people that work with children. Yes, yeah, so we have we have three main groups uh, that we train. Uh, one is um, early interventionists, and, and we're we're very very dedicated to training uh, birth to three workers in the country, um, developmental therapists, uh, also known as early intervention. Uh, part C, uh, and we've trained uh, several entire states, uh, Utah, uh, Ohio, and now Illinois become interested. Uh, we also train many agencies in that area. Then medical rehab services, so speech and language, occupational therapy is uh, our second, probably our second largest group. And then the third group is community mental health workers, uh, people who are really working, you know, autism, for the first time, for the first time in my life, uh, autism has now uh, been determined to be a medical condition. Uh, so the Obama administration pa uh, basically uh, passed a law uh, under under Medicaid that made autism a medical condition. It's called uh, EPSDT, Early Periodic Screening, Diagnosis, and Treatment. Basically, if, if you have a medical diagnosis, um, then you have T treatment uh, required. And so as a result, uh, Medicaid now is mandated to cover autism services. And that means largely behavioral health, which means mental health. And so more and more uh, insurance companies are starting to cover not just ABA, but any evidence-based practice. And so as a result, the play project now is being covered by Kaiser Permanente in California, uh, Minnesota Medicaid, and just recently, brand new, this rolling out this summer, TRICARE, the military insurance, will be covering parent-implemented models. Um, based on the arguments that I'm giving to you here on your, your website, I mean, on your podcast, um, to me, this is revolutionizing the way we're going to uh, treat autism uh, going forward and it's very exciting because it makes total sense that you would train parents uh, to help their own children as a public policy approach it's 10 times cheaper than when a therapist delivers the services it's efficient um, you can reach thousands of families this way by uh, one, one of our play consultants we call him the play project consultant one play project consultant can train 25 families. So if uh, a large ABA program is 25 to 50 families. So I mean, if you think about it, why should our diagnostic clinics not be recommending uh, parent training as a therapeutic intervention? You know, uh, it's, it's, it's intensive, it's intensive and because uh, we, you know, we ask parents to put in about 15 hours a week, you know, working with their children, which is easy to do because uh, every parent, even a two working parent family and a single working parent family is spending 45 waking hours with their child. And what our parents tell us is that, yeah, we just play all the time, you know, turn off the TV, don't let your kid play by themselves too much, put in a couple of hours a day of engaging, playful intervention throughout all your daily activities and you're delivering intensive intervention uh, in a playful way. It's, it's very powerful, it's very powerful, it's amazing, so. Absolutely, and um, I have a couple of questions about that, which I'm not sure which order you'd like to answer them in,
but um, do you have, first of all, ABA therapists that come and get play, trained for the play project? And, and I guess, is it challenging for them to make that shift? And secondly, what is the difference for parents listening? What's the difference between ABA and the play project? Uh, well, um, you know, I, I think I'll, I'll answer your uh, second question first, because I, I think it's important to understand that there is a fundamental difference between uh, ABA and uh, uh, what I call developmental models. Uh, uh, two, two main fundamental differences. One, one is that in the developmental, playful, play-based approaches, you're always following the child's idea. In an ABA, it's much more program directed, and, and in fact, the two the two are. Uh, I'm the medical director. I've I've been the medical director of four ABA programs in my life, now, starting way back uh, when I first met Stanley Greenspan, and I, I actually knew Ivar Lovas himself, the 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 developer of the ABA therapy services. Um, I, uh, the you know, I think these two models can work beautifully together, and we do have a number of ABA organizations that are starting to get interested in what we're doing because I think, and now the research needs to be done, but if you add a developmental play-based approach to ABA, then you have a much more complete program uh, because developmental models do three things that ABA models don't do. Number one, there's a focus on interaction. Okay, ABA, that's not their focus. Um, uh, our whole, uh, our, uh, our, early, our early approach is all about back and forth, back and forth engagement. Um, number two, we work on the feeling life of the child. And number three, we work on the imagine, imaginative life of the child, all in a developmental context. And, and so uh, the, uh, the ABA programs, are pro uh, when you look at their research outcomes, are mostly on IQ, which is very important, and, and language outcomes. And so when you combine the two, you got interaction, emotion, imagination, IQ, and language, wow, that's a great combination, very powerful, very powerful. Now, um, you know, in, in the play-based models, you are honoring the child's idea. In ABA, you're teaching the child. And, and you're prompting the child to make gains in their language and IQ skills. So they're very different, very different models. Uh, although as ABA has evolved, you know, my joke is that they're becoming a lot more playful, um, but they still have their agenda. And uh, in the play project, we are always following the child's idea and then building on the child's idea. That's how we get the child to make progress developmentally. Um, and so there is a big fundamental difference between the two. You know? So let, let me ask you to define we're always, um, I forget exact words you used, we're always um, pushing the child's progress developmentally. You didn't say pushing, but... Um, uh, Stanley, Stanley Greenspan called it wooing. Yes. We wooing, woo. wooing the child's developmental potential. So... What exactly does that mean? Because it's very easy for parents to understand ABA says we're going to teach the child how to do this. We're going to teach them how That's to be right. toilet trained. We're going to teach them how to put on their shoes. We're going to teach them how to feed themselves. We're going to do this. We're That's going right. to make That's sure they right. learn this. But what does that mean when we say we're going, to, we're going to help your child developmentally? That is a harder concept for parents to understand who are new. Um, maybe their child just got diagnosed and, and they're not sure what that means. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I don't want to get too theoretical, but I am going to invoke the name of uh, Vygotsky, and and Vygotsky is a, a Russian psychologist who defined three zones of learning. So at the innermost zone, uh, we I call that the comfort zone. This is the child with autism. What they what they do when you leave them alone? It's their repetitive behaviors. It's where they're stuck, and. And the secret to understanding autism is, for parents especially, is to understand that children with autism want to keep the world the same. That's their main goal in life because of their neurology, which is largely due to genetics. So um, autism is largely a genetic condition that causes the brain to be disorganized. And so as a result, the child 
finds it very comforting to stay in a narrow range where things make sense, and I call that the comfort zone. The next zone up, Vygotsky called the zone of proximal development. That's where you're actually challenging the child um, to do something new. Uh, and in the play project type models, the parent implemented playful based models, you are challenging the child to come out of their comfort zone and to engage with you, but you're doing it in a way that's really fun. And what I always say is that when you do what the child loves, so we're joining the child, but when you do what they love, then they're going to love to be with you. And, and that's not autism. Uh, now the child says, oh, my mom, my dad, my brothers, my sisters, oh, they're, they're fun. You know, it's like, I don't mind coming out of my comfort zone into my zone of proximal development. Children with autism actually say this. They, they say, oh, I love being in my zone of proximal development because it's fun, you know? And, and the danger, the danger is, and, and this is a problem with ABA and, and with a lot of parents, they play too high, but Gotsky called that the zone of potential development. Now they, they, they may have potential way up here, but you don't wanna play there because that would make them uncomfortable, that would make them feel, um, it, they can't even do it, uh, it's too high, it's called too high. So, so you don't wanna to play too low, you don't wanna to play too high, you wanna play just right, and when you do that, the child comes out of their comfort zone, they make progress, and in the beginning, that looks like more back and forth interaction. That's how, for, for children with autism, that interactional process is the foundation for helping the child uh, improve in their autism. Then, and in the Greenspan model, as they make progress in their interaction, where they have Greenspan level one shared attention with people, fun with people, I call it fun with people, they're engaged with people, and they're interacting back and forth with people, then magically, language starts to emerge. Gestural language first, receptive language next, and then expressive language emerges like a flower out of the ground and the child begins the process of really talking and, and, and learning. So our, our model does challenge the child in that zone of proximal development. We're not just simply following the child's lead wherever, they t wherever that takes you, but we are honoring their lead, we're joining their lead and by doing that in a fun way the child wants to be with you and and it's 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 beautiful it's beautiful parents love it it's fun it's it's playful the kids love it there's no crying and screaming um and it works and, and that's what we've shown in our research it actually does work and you know in our study the children made major gains in all aspects of their development including language so and, and certainly the, the BINS article showed that the developmental social pragmatic methods did show more generalization in the gains that they made in speech and language. That's right. It generalizes because you're not prompting. This comes from within the child. This uh, part of my point was uh, uh, it, this is child centered. So when the child learns it, it they've learned it deep. Uh, it's now in their bones. And they you don't have to keep prompting them because they get it. You know, when they want you to play with them, they want you to play with them. And they come and they get you and they want to play. And you better watch out, you know, because, because we, like we call it creating a monster, you know, because once the child like loves to play with you, watch out, they're gonna come and get you a lot, you know, so. Oh, it's the best in the so world. Ready, parents. Every, every day, every day, my little guy says to me, "Mama, will you play with me?" Mama, there you go. You there you go. There you he's go. now ten. He's developmentally quite delayed, but he's um, he's right in there at functional, emotional, developmental capacity four, working through four, peaking uh -huh. into five and six. And um, anyone wants to see the developmental progress, they just go through my blog okay. post at affectautism.com and see the videos of my son over the last four years the the progress is really incredible yeah that's great well well we you know i mean i i'm a developmental pediatrician and i follow literally hundreds per year thousands over my life and i've seen so many children make 
great developmental gains. Uh, and more importantly, you know, to be joyous and engage with people. Um, I mean, the, look, the, there's, there's slow movers, there's medium movers, and there's fast movers. And um, our job is not necessarily to help these children all become typical, although about 10 to 15% do. Um, this is new research, uh, Deborah Fine's work, I think, uh, looked at optimal outcomes. Uh, but they, um, they, we help each child reach their full potential. If you want to see an amazing, I mean, you probably saw this video, uh, Ben Gretschko, did you see the Ben Gretschko uh, video? Uh, where, sure. where, he, where he speaks to his high school class. I, I probably did, but I don't know the name, but I will link to it in the blog post of this uh, podcast. Yeah, you should, that you should. It's com. very yeah. touching, especially now this time of graduation, you know, people are graduating. Mm -hmm. So Ben Gretschko was a patient of mine who had really significant autism as, as a three-year-old, and his parents did the play project, and it put him on the path toward his potential, and he, eventually he became you know, graduated high school, and they asked him to speak to his graduating class. And his video went viral to the tune of uh, two million hits or something like that. And so if you can connect your audience to that, I think they would find that very heartwarming. It's so moving for him, for, 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 to see him thanking his class for being kind to him. And, and now, you know, and I've stayed in touch with the family, he's now gone to college. And so, I mean, you know, I think the potential within many of the children is to really reach the heights of you know human possibility so absolutely it's it's great and um i i wanted to ask a little bit about um your like how did how did the play project come about you said you were colleagues with dr mm -hmm. greenspan and dr weeder and and yeah. certainly a lot of the other experts that i've done podcasts with dr joshua fader dr glavinsky uh, you know all of them. Um, yes, yes, and, I do. And yes. so how how did the play project come about? What was it sort well, it's, of? It's kind it? of a funny, it's kind of a funny story because, because um, I never was interested in autism, okay? And I don't have a kid with autism. And I, I went to Pittsburgh uh, t mostly to help teenage mothers and their babies. I was more, always more interested in infant mental health issues. And and when I got there, it turned out that the state of Pennsylvania had been sued by the parents of young children with autism, and the parents won the lawsuit. So they came to me, they actually found me, I didn't seek them. They came to me in my office at Allegheny General Hospital in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and they said, Dr. Solomon, you know, you're the new developmental pediatrician in town. Uh, would you order this new therapy for us? So we won this lawsuit and we want you to order this therapy. And I said, okay, well, what's the therapy? And they said, it's ABA, it's called ABA. I said, never heard of it. <laughs> and, and they showed me a video clip, uh, I mean, a videotape. And I put the videotape in the slot, you know, in the TV set. It was back in 1989, 1990. And uh, there was a kid sitting at a table being drilled, you know, taught to touch his nose. Touch your nose, Johnny, touch your nose. Here's some candy. And I went, oh, okay, I, I know what that is. You know, that's operant conditioning. That's, a, that's ABA. Oh, okay, I'll order that. So I ordered these five families, their therapy, and amazingly, with the stroke of my pen, I just ordered them 30 to 40 hours of therapy per week, one-on-one, -on -one, one -on -one, in the home from a trained ABA therapist for free to the parents. I went like, whoa, this is amazing that I could do that for them. I was so happy. And, and of course, you know, those five families, they, they, talked to, they talked about me. And I got 10 families. Then I got 20 families. Then I got 40 families. And I became like the ABA doctor in Pittsburgh, believe it or not. And, 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 I, and I'm not really fond of ABA. Okay, I mean, as a there, I'm much more of a playful, developmental, you know, uh, guy, uh, and so I started learning. I, I actually did a fellowship where I met Stanley Greenspan, and so I invited Stanley to Pittsburgh, and I had him, you know, give us a workshop, and I fell in love with the DIR model, and by the time I was done, ten years later. I had both programs running at the same time. Parents could come to me in Pittsburgh and say, you know, Dr. Solomon, I'd like uh, 10, 
would you give me a, a 20 hours of ABA therapist and 20 hours of a play therapist, please? And I just take my pen and I prescribe it. Um, and what I learned and the important lesson was uh, two things. One is that intensity matters. So if you do two to three hours a day, 20 hours a week, whatever, um, 15 to 20 hours a week with your child, uh, these many of these children got much, much better. I had to see them back to reorder their therapy every three to four months. Um, so I learned that intensity matters, and I learned that children with autism have tremendous potential. And I also loved the Greenspan framework, and I developed that model when I went to Michigan. So i just finish the story by saying, when I went to Michigan, so I, I left Pennsylvania to go back home to Michigan. Uh, and I went to the University of Michigan, where I was the head of their developmental behavioral pediatrics section. And I got out my pen to prescribe 40 hours of ABA in the home for free. And guess what? You know, there was no therapy. Michigan, the state of Michigan versus the state of Pennsylvania, Michigan has had no therapy. Uh, so out of desperation, I, I basically embraced the play project and started to train the parents uh, as our solution. And when I opened my doors, dozens of families flocked to the University of Michigan to get play project. That was the origins of the play project, which I say was uh, born out of desperation. And, and I had 25 families sign up, I mean, just like that. And then I hired another therapist and 25 families signed up just like that. And I hired another therapist and, and another 20. In the first two years of my being at the University of Michigan, I had 75 families signed up for the play project. And uh, my chairman said, uh, Jean Robillard, he said, you got to stop. I said, why? Why? It's, it's work. I'm telling you, it's working. It's doing great. He says, you need to do research. So I took those 75 families and I studied their videos before and after intervention. And I published that work in the journal Autism in 2007. And then I used that pilot study to get my big NIH grant that led to the research that we now have, where I had 120 families randomly assigned a random control trial. And that was really the origins of the play project. And that was 2007. Dr. Greenspan was with us till 2010. What, what did you get a feel for how he felt about the play project? I imagine he must have been thrilled that people were taking his model and developing um, interventions that would help so many families. Yeah, the, no, he loved the model. Serena Weeder loves the model. Um, I, I think that the ICDL website and the Perfectum website both use my research as kind of the, I would say, the evidence base for uh, DIR. Um, it's probably the strongest DIR study, you know, done, and it's used and quoted and referenced in, in both uh, ICDL and Perfectum websites. Um, and now the, the Mercer article that I had uh, earlier showed more studies using DIR, but ours was probably the best. So yeah, of course, they, they love that model. And, and uh, uh, it, it is, I would call it an application of the DIR theoretical framework because DIR is much broader. Our, our model is focused strictly on young children with autism, parent training. You know, uh, but if you want an evidence-based parent training model and you want to learn how to do that, uh, we're org our organization is probably the best one because we train on a large scale. The state of Ohio adopted our model statewide. And now every parent who has a child with autism, um, uh, it, birth to three in Ohio gets the play project for free. Amazing. Yeah. And I've just put the website up again for those watching on YouTube to see it, playproject.org, where you can go to look up training, and there's a whole section for parents. Yep. Um, so find, a, find a play project near you. You know, that's, that's important for parents. And, uh, and we are working very hard now to get the insurance companies um, to, to pay for parent-implemented models because the evidence is there now. And we're finding that the insurance companies – you know, want to do this. So parents, if you're listening, um, please reach out to your insurance companies and, and ask for parent training models for autism intervention and use our website as, as evidence. And, and seriously, I will personally uh, reach out um, to insurance companies if parents have connections 
to make the argument, which is exactly what I did for TRICARE and Kaiser. And it's a compelling argument. I even have a document called Five Reasons Why Insurance Companies uh, Should Cover Parent Implemented Models. So, uh, is that document publicly available that we could link to in the blog post, or is I that something it, that people should I, I can contact give it to you? you. I, I don't have it publicly available because I use it just really for reaching out to medical directors for insurance companies. But we actually have a letter for families uh, to send to their insurance companies, and we have uh, uh, five points why insurance companies should cover it. I'm happy to share it with you. Okay, so if listeners are interested in that, they can contact me through affectautism.com or contact Dr. Solomon through the Play Project website. Yeah, in fact, you know, you've made me realize that what we should do is put this up on our website and make it available for families. So for parents interested, I'll, I'll talk to Jamie and we'll, we'll do that this week. Now, I know that right now where I live, uh, just outside of Toronto, our province has been having a big battle about right, right. coverage for therapy and, and, um, and, there is a debate about whether to put it into our, it's called OHIP, the Ontario Health Insurance Plan. And um, there, there's some polarized views on that, whether autism is considered a medical condition versus a neurotypical, uh, neurodiverse uh, kind of um, no, that's a fair debate. Um, but that is the way that a lot of parents want to go simply because they're sitting around on wait lists with no therapy at all. And it's a shame. quite frankly, most people only know about ABA. So I really want to get the word out there that the play project is um, something that's much more enjoyable for your children. But as you mentioned, um, ABA doing some of the things that are more structured. I know that Dr. Greenspan in the DIR model even suggested having structured time, unstructured time, and then floor time, where you do a bit of all three. And although um, I don't think he meant ABA and the structured aspect of it, it's Probably it's not. more like a you have a kind of um, agenda where you want to work on with your child, but you're doing it in a much more playful way. And well, so we, I, we, we just did a training in Hamilton, uh, Ontario, and we're doing another training uh, in the fall um, uh, with Cindy Harrison. Uh, who's a speech and language pathologist lives in, in Ontario in Ottawa yep. in Ottawa and uh, we're planning on doing a large-scale training in Canada coming up in the fall so if you keep your eye on our website you know you should be able to find it pretty easily once we're up and we'll we'll let you know about that um, the uh, the uh, the problem in in Ontario is the same that we see here is long waiting lists of Children who are languishing, um, it, it, it's so sad. It's so sad to me. I, you know, I could cry over this. Uh, the, to think that young children are waiting for services when their life, their, that, that window, that beautiful little window of brain plasticity is closing um, is just, uh, to me, it's a waste of life. Literally, it's a shame. And we really need to make sure that public policy addresses these wait lists and the best way to do that is through parent implemented models and and I think Ontario is going to do that uh, it sounds like they are and we would love to be able to serve the community that way because it's so easy and and parents are so stressed especially parents when we just get the diagnosis and and we're we're at a loss like how do I play with my child my child Absolutely. just runs away from me my child just throws all the toys on the floor and, and I was in the same boat what do I do? And it's just such, it, a lot of it is intuitive and you'll find some parents intuitively play that way with their children already, but others just need that coaching, that little yeah. bit of coaching to say, look at when you do this, watch your child's eyes. Like Dr. Greenspan said, the gleam in his eye as, as yeah. um, I find this ball and my eyes laid up and I'm getting ready to throw it. And my son is so excited. Where's this ball going to bounce? And just, yeah. you know, really fun, whatever the child's interested in being able to get that interaction going it just such simple steps and that's why i made the website don't sit on the wait list read the blogs do some of these playful interactions with well, your kid and yeah and i would mention that the play project in regard to what you just said the play project is actually a highly structured approach so we we are designed for parents and we um uh, it's not just go go play we have techniques we have activities we have methods 
Um, we have uh, video examples on our website. Um, we, uh, we are designed for teaching families how to do this. And um, we, you know, uh, we also, I also have a book out now um, called Autism, the Potential Within, which actually trains in the second section of the book. It's a big book, but it's like three books in one. The second section is on um, uh, the play project. And, and um, actually, yeah, where is there it? Is. Oh, there, there it is. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this, this book, uh, the second section is a parent training manual based on the play project. And the character in the book, a, a little boy named Jacob Grant, uh, is followed from from the time of diagnosis until he turns five years old and he's starting to get towards school and he he makes a lot of progress over time and so this book follows the family and the and it's done in in the form of a series of office visits with me so it's like you know coming to my office and I have like in the first section of the book there's a an interesting chapter when Jenny McCarthy comes to Detroit the mother calls me up and so should I be doing biomedical approaches? So I discuss those in that chapter. And I have a chapter called The Language Mountain, which it tells parents how children gain language when their child has autism. And in the third section of the book are all the behavior problems you can imagine. Jacob Grant, it's called Jacob Grant, pain in the butt, um, because he has problems with sleep and problems with eating and problems with going out uh, on, you know, to the restaurant. So. Uh, I would recommend, you know, that the parents uh, take a look at the book, which can be gotten on Lulu, uh, but also on Amazon, and it's also available as a download. But I, I think it's more of a resource resource type of book. So, so and and I, I love Greenspan and Weeder's book, Engaging Autism. But this is really a different. This is really a different approach. It's really designed to walk parents through the process of helping their own child in a step-by-step office visit by office visit method. It sounds more like a handbook. It's kind of like a handbook, yeah. Although you can read it through, it's a story about this family. Uh, but it's also each visit is a problem for the family. And so um, each visit is like its own little story. And, and I think families would like it. Yeah, I think family, I hope families would like it. So. And you've mentioned numerous times that the play project is directed at young children that have the autism diagnosis. Yes. Um, so how old do, do your kids have to be to qualify for the play project but, if they're doing it through the official streams? Yeah, yeah. well, I, I would say, you know, our, our model works with any age child, but our commitment is to early intervention. So, uh, uh, we, we focus mostly on children less than six years of age okay. uh, because we want to reach, I, I'm an early interventionist. I want to reach children as soon as there's even red flags. You don't even have to have a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. I believe you can start intervening um, by 14 months, you know, definitely. And even earlier, I have children that we're, that we're worried about earlier. The play project will help any child, seriously. But we're dedicated to early intervention. Um, we've even used the model with adults, and it works because you're still using the DAR model, uh, which is playful and fun and engaging, and it helps anybody. But really, if you're gonna if you're gonna dedicate yourself to so self to something, then do it for the youngest children possible, so that they don't have to suffer going for it. And parents can you know really start right away. And one thing I wanted to mention, uh, just related to your comment about how anxiety provoking it is for parents, our research showed that parents who participated in the play project, their stress went down dramatically over the year of intervention, and their depression was significantly improved compared to the control group. And I believe firmly that it's because we're teaching parents how to connect with their child in a way that helps their child and is fun and that is joyous and, and that makes them happy and, and their stress goes down and their depression goes down. And let me tell you, there was a lot of depression. Uh, like 40% of our family scored high on the depression scale. It was an enormous percentage. Um, and I understand that. 
I mean, and, I, and, and of course, when the child is, is not able to communicate, they're probably depressed and anxious. And so it's, it's exacerbating each other. So once the child is happier and connected and more playful, they don't have the need to have a lot of the behavioral disruptions that are so stressful for parents to, to navigate and to manage. So um, yeah, there's no I question. Imagine, no yeah. question. Children with autism are anxious you know, they, because they're trying to keep the world the same. And guess what? You know, the world isn't going to stay the same for them. The demands go up as they age. Um, and so anxiety is a huge problem for so many of my children. I call my children, but yeah, it's a big, it's a big problem. And, uh, you know, I mean, to me, uh, the, the play project is a family systems approach. And, uh, and that's what the book expresses. I'm always talking with the family about their feelings about their experience, about their mother, you know, behind every mother is a mother. Um, uh, and so many of our families, parents, just the grandparents don't understand. They, they, they want to see, oh, he's, you know, he'll outgrow it. He's just a, a normal little boy. And um, grandparents don't realize that they're isolating themselves from the family when the family needs help the most. And so this is the kind of uh, family systems approach that really matters, you know, to families. So, uh, so that's in the book too, and and uh, it's also in my office practice. I mean, it, it's a reflection of what I do in my office every day. So. so, for our listeners, if you are a practitioner working with children and you're interested in the Play Project, go to playproject.org. You can look up where to be trained in this method. If you're a parent. Can you also take the training or do you think it's more helpful to find a play project provider to work with you? Well, we have on our website, we have a couple trainings. So one is called the Welcome to the Play Project, which is like an introduction, two hour introduction in multiple courses. So you don't have to take it all at once. Um, I would highly recommend that for anybody who's interested, um, for, for parents or professionals. Um, we have a number of uh, webinars and, and other resources. There's a number of YouTube videos that parents will find very helpful. So our online course and our uh, and our two-day training, which we're going to be giving in Canada, and, and if you go to our website, we have a schedule for the rest of the year. We're working in China. We're, we're working all over the world. Um, you can see where we're training. Those are appropriate for anybody, parents or professionals. Uh, for professionals who are interested in certifying, so our professional development approach involves first a basic training, then a six-week award-winning online course that teaches you the secrets of the play project, uh, how to relate to parents, and then supervision. That's a long process, but when you're done, our research showed that the professionals who take our certification really learn it and really can apply it to families. And so, you know, we have something for both the professionals and, and the parents uh, when it comes to uh, training for the for play project approach. Well, Dr. Sullivan, I can't thank you enough, not just for speaking with us today, but for going out of the way, taking the effort to get the funding to do those research trials, to get the evidence base for a developmental relational based approach that families can use that that in my mind is so much more helpful than ABA. And so thank you for all the work you've done. And uh, I, I hope it only grows and grows and that well, you can get Dar funded thank, here where I you, live. Thank you so much. To, uh, I really appreciate your doing this and, and everything that you're doing for all the families and all the professionals. I mean, this is a wonderful, you know, service and podcast. So thank you so much for doing what you do. You're welcome, and uh, it was great to speak with you. And listeners, yeah. please do check out the blog post. I will put links to everything that Dr. Solomon mentioned, and you can check it all out at affectautism.com. Just search Play Project. Thank Thanks. you again. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Until next time, here's to affecting autism through play.